I've recently finished the series after really putting off the last few books. I was very nervous to get to them because every other one in the series kept being kind of a letdown or just didn't hit right for me. And no, I don't want you to think that I did not like this whole series and just kept going for like hate reading or something. No, what I mean by that is like every other book I liked. This last book, it kept getting, you know, pushed to the bottom of the TBR. Like it would come up on the month and I would be, I'll get to you last. Not prioritizing it. But I finally did. I finally did. And now I am no longer sure about this. So we are going to talk about The Witcher today, and this is not going to be exactly a review, more of kind of a pro-con list of would you want to do the series? What are the high points, in my opinion, and the low points? Also, take this with the hugest grain of salt ever because I have read this series over years, and there are certainly details that I don't remember anymore. Possibly even things that I loved that I don't remember anymore. I didn't even track when I was reading the first ones. Or did I put star ratings on Goodreads for them? Point one in the series' favor is that it is completed. We have the five main novels, a short story collection, another short story, and a prequel novel or story. I don't have that one. But now that I have completed it, I'm not sure either. Make might just be more sad. Whoops. Okay, now what is this series about? Even though I'm sure, I'm sure you have heard of it and that was possibly very loud. I'm so sorry. The series is following a group of characters, like several characters, as their world is in a time of chaos and war. One of the countries, Nilfgaard, is attacking the Northern Kingdoms for a very kind of specific reason that slowly delved more into. I don't think you really see it in the first few books, based on my memory, which we talked about was questionable. This, though, Nilfgaard and several other factions and countries are all after this one character for different, similar reasons. And the book's big theme is destiny. And what is the destiny of this girl? What is the destiny of our other main characters and fate and prophecies? The second thing going for this series would be the characters. There are way too many to name, for sure. But the main ones are going to be Geralt of Rivia, who is a witcher. Witchers are, well, monster hunters. At points of the book, it makes it seem like he is kind of famous, which I guess he is known. But it also makes him seem like a very successful thing. But there are other witchers. Not very many at this point in time. There are others. And Geralt is just a generally good person, and I guess he just somehow... Somehow he just gets very well known. We can blame one of our other characters that's kind of a notable side character more than going into, and that's Dandelion, the bard. We'll blame Dandelion for Geralt's fame, probably. Not saying Geralt's not strong and not a good person, but one of the things about all of our characters is that they are kind of flawed people. They're not perfect, and that what makes you connect to them more and like them and want to follow them and root for them, which is our second main character. Not Yennefer. Like, the three of them really meet in The Last Wish. Yennefer Vangenberg, Vangerberg? Vangenberg is a sorceress. She had a very rough start in life and then was taken to the school of Eratusa and learned magic and was able to harness the chaos into becoming a sorceress. Then she spent some time as a royal advisor and met Geralt. And Yennefer is just a very powerful character. She has such a strong will and kind of personality and shaping things to the world she wants. Who I'll consider our last main character and is really, really a big one. I feel like, hmm, it's, it's a toss up of who you see from more, Geralt or Ciri. Princess Cirilla of Centura is one of the characters that you will see grow and develop the most over the series. This is because when you are first introduced to her, she's a child. She's a little princess. And through the series, she grows into a young woman. And it is questionable her age. It really is. She could be like 10 or 11 when we first introduced and maybe 16 or 17 when the series is over. We just know that she is a younger woman, swordsman, swordwoman at the end. 
Princess Siri goes through lots and lots of struggles and traumatic, very traumatic things. This is to do with the war that's waging, with all the prophecies that are surrounding her and her connections through destiny to Geralt and even Yennefer. Their found family bond is so beautiful. Pro 3 is the complex and deep world because I love world building and even though this is kind of just maybe generic fantasy world? Not generic. It just, it could be any fantasy world almost. The mythical monstrous creatures are derived from our own mythical creatures that, you know, are in our fairy tales and our stories. Then the settings, it's, a lot of it is just medieval sounding and forests. But the biggest piece of the books in the world is the politics and how intricate and in-depth the political machinations and movements are. One of the large things also is what the book focuses in on by having multiple POVs and multiple side character POVs is the disparity between the different races as you do get to see through dwarves and even I feel like elves at some points too and see how they're looked down upon. You get to see how it's different from women versus men, the way they are treated, what is expected of them, how easily they are discarded and seen as useless and what is, you know, acceptable to be done to one that's not acceptable to be done to the other or what they can be used for. That one came up a lot, a lot in the last book. <laughs> the next pro would be that it's a, like an adventure journey story, which might sound odd considering I just said there's deep world building and politics, or, but yeah, because kind of through a lot of these, more so in something like this, where it's like Tales of the Witcher, where it's individual short stories, Geralt is fighting monsters in all of these, so there are diversions, and for parts of these, it is told in the form of like, there's the present, and here's where we are now, and well, this is how we got here for a brief period, and then we're here, and this is how we got here. Still, we go back to different points, different little adventures as we're traveling across the land, as things are happening, as we're fighting this monster. This is what happened in this land. This is what happened in this land. So you were traveling with Geralt pretty much all around the world to each of the different countries. So it's an adventure story though. So if you like going on side quests with characters, this happens quite a lot in this story, which is probably why it took so many books. Our last pro is kind of, it depends on how you want to look at the end of this series overall. It ends on a very hopeful note for our main character. So you do not have a firm conclusion. It's kind of, you know, happily ever after, but not. That's much too upbeat for this, but just that there might be a bright future, that there might be a hopeful possibility for a better rest of her life. While I liked that for her, I didn't like how this series left off for our others. I was, <laughs> I did not like that openness of that. Let's try to keep the cons shorter. Maybe this way the video is more positive. And I also had five pros and only four cons. So there's that. First one is going to be that the book is kind of slow. Books. Many books were slow, especially the last one. It's just possibly his writing style. He is a very descriptive. Some people would describe it as purple. Some people just, I don't know. I'm not good with classifying that. I'm sorry. But it's, you can visualize the scenes and the places, which is interesting because there's not a map. There was never an official map made for the games, sure, but not for this as the author himself said that the world is still evolving in his mind. So he wouldn't de define the map. So some things are contradictory through the books of where things are. Or through the game maps, maybe. Yeah, more so the game maps than through the books. But still, very, very detailed. And which is great sometimes. Also, though, very slow. Which also leads into the next point. <laughs> Unnecessary POVs and situations. 
this was the my biggest problem probably with the last book so so many povs like through the whole series you get random side characters which sure add to the world and i love world building so you think wouldn't be bad but they're just kind of unnecessary like i think i remember a whole thing happening in another country where they were supposed to be like preparing or something and i don't remember that ever coming up again most notably though would be in of course bah. this book like chapter six or eight where we're in the big battle and all the side characters you see so many of them just die at the end of their scene that's how we switch to somebody else because who you were seeing from this perspective of the battle they just die also with this one yeah this was god i it's just the end of the series, maybe, so that's why all the cons can fall on this one. The repetitiveness of this one. Like a certain thing. Everyone's after Siri for this, you know, prophecy, but yet they only want to find it fulfilled through this one thing. So we're all going to try to do this thing. Even one guy who didn't even know who she was was going to try to do this thing to her. Why did we have to have so many scenes of that? Yes, okay, it happens. I get that it happens. But my gosh. The book's already slow enough and then you're going to throw repetitive situations like this at me? My last con is that the big overarching thing that Siri was important for and that everybody wanted Siri for was kind of just left up through the air. The end of the book, I mean, yes, okay, great, she's hopeful ending, but why? Why was it such a big deal at this point? Overall, considering I did not have a tracker for the first few books or even have a star rating on Goodreads, so I don't remember what I would have considered them. I just remember that I liked some of them and I did not jive with the others. So maybe a 3 or 3.5 star average for the whole series. But so many people love this series. This is some people's favorite series ever. And I know there are high points to it. And I know there are points in its favor. That's why we had this whole video going over the pros and cons. And yes, I ended up with 5 pros and only 4 cons without, you know, getting nitpicky because I don't want to get nitpicky and I want you to decide for yourself if you've already read it or if you want to pick this series up. I just wanted to get my thoughts out because it keeps, you know, popping into my brain and I think, I think I did. I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll subscribe or check out some of my other ones and see like how that I normally actually do things and then subscribe if you want to. I just hope you're having a fantastic day and finding something great to read. Bye y'all.